Kia ora everybody. Firstly, I'd just like to thank everyone for, for taking the time out of their busy schedules to come and have a conversation today. A really, really cool conversation. So Minister, what if I was to tell you we were able to sustain our vibrant economy, address our, address our responsibilities for the environment that sees us achieve that in an ethical manner that sees cultural values upheld. In Canterbury today, we're achieving that. What works is a partnership between the farmers, the council and the other advisors that are helping us to actually look at what does that mean practically and how do we implement that in a way that has meaning for you as well as has meaning for the broader community. My grandfather, my father and I, we've, none of us have had a huge debt loading so we've been able to farm without having to overstock and we've tried to take care of our soil. My father started clearing this creek and um, with Peter Chamberlain's help with the Hearts Creek Stream Committee we've um, carried on and have done what you can see here um, long before we had a farm environmental plan or even thought about something like that. Our waters are a, a precious resource so doing anything that we can do on farm to protect that resource is massive, that's what I, I believe. So yeah, we're just on the edge of it and um, yeah, I'm really positive on just the things that can be achieved. The challenge I have is retaining what we need to do and achieve for our environment through ECAN, getting out amongst our communities and having a strong relationship so we can actually talk quite frankly and actually outcome driven. What can we do on the ground? So. With these farming groups that I, that I have come to know really, really well, I'm seeing the same characteristics that my tipuna had, my ancestors have through kaitiakitanga, through stewardship, rangatiratanga, through leadership, and that actually, if it's farmer driven and if it comes within, my job's done. My value's already with these people. So that's quite a humbling, humbling uh, observation I've had, although there has been challenges. You know, I can remember back in 1985 talking to a, a farming leader in this catchment who's actually no longer with us, who seriously made the point that he felt the lake was, was too far gone. We should sacrifice it, we should just keep pouring stuff into it and focus our, our conservation and our restoration attempts elsewhere in the region. Now, of course, that was kind of a comment made, you know, in terms of the values of the day, but it failed to recognise the critical importance of that lake, not just to, well, particularly to Naitahu, but to all of us as a community. We actually want the values uh, that we're looking for, that we treasure, uh, from our past and from the history and that Naitahu uh, actually brings to the table. Because we can talk about nutrients, we can talk about nitrogen, we can talk about phosphorus, we can talk about a whole lot of things, but actually it's the Mahinga Kai. It's actually, that's what we're looking for. That's why we're doing all this. And so I guess we're building on a steady building blocks uh, to achieve that. So, Mahinakai, our resources sustain our families. Just like my ancestors, this resource develops a product that feeds the world, that feeds their family. No different to the past. So with that, there's a saying that goes, Motato a munga uri e muri ake nei, and it's for us and for our generations to come. Probably driven by you know a philosophical approach, care for the land, which is which is what iwi have always done. And I, as as a former farmer, we only look after the land while we're here. We never really own it at all. And and I think if you take that approach and you try and leave it better for the next generation um, with all the knowledge, then then you've been you know a decent farmer. You know this is very fertile soil. There's huge advantage. I guess that's why you know iwi Naitahu you know came around here because of the food that it would produce. Um, and so for the same reasons, farmers settled here early on. Um, but we just kind of, in some areas, pushed the boundaries a bit too far. So with what we learn, uh, we've got to be smarter. And so thanks very much for hosting it as part of. I hope a new approach to farming across the country that says we understand our environment, we don't have to push the limits, and more importantly, we'll get more from what we do. And I guess if the, the values and the food that we produce connect from the consumer back to the farmer, then we really got it made. And uh, 
the person who pays a hell of a lot more for it in Berlin or in London will understand that they do so because they're supporting the land um, that, that develops that food. So that's the story that we have to develop.